Rich were involved in doing some brainstorming on a new project and uh, got a hold of me as part of her very deep research uh, experience where she continues to do some homework on the project, which I'll let her introduce. And basically we started doing a little bit of financial work, but also doing a little bit of, of uh, I don't know if we want to call it troubleshooting, or um, we, we bounced ideas back and forth. We'll see what she says about it. Uh, we bounced a lot of ideas back and forth and spent a lot of time on the phone. And have actually up until this morning when we were emailing back and forth to continue to pursue. Uh, this is a fairly major manufacturing project that really drives back to uh, several thousand acres of, of farmland that can be pulled into a useful product that, that hopefully, um, uh, when it happens, I'm not even going to say yet, when it happens, <laughs> the, the uh, uh, biofuel that we're, we're working with uh, will be then dispersed into both export markets and regional markets. And with that, I will turn it over to Doreen Barton, and she can introduce the new biomass. I'm, I'm, I am not good at this, so everybody knows. I am a good talker. Jeff told me I'm limited on my time. Um, have you ever woke up one morning and wondered how life had actually brought you to right where you're at right now? How the decisions of yesterday affect you for the future? Have you ever really had a chance to thank the people who have helped you along the way? I will tell you a bit about what has happened to us over the past year and a half. We have researched, collaborated with our advisor from PharmNet, which is Jeff, held meetings and dealt with a lot of stress and very little sleep. But somewhere in there, we developed a business model that will utilize grassy biomass for an alternative fuel. The model, this model will assist farmers and landowners with sustainability efforts by connecting agriculture to the renewable energy market. To fully understand the development of our project, you need to know who we are. My business partner, Richard Barrows, was a sixth generation dairy farmer until 1985. He owns about 150 acres of marginal land that now holds a small hobby farm. He has also owned and operated a portable sawmill. His collective background has provided our organization with leadership and knowledge of farming practices and understanding of sustainability. I grew up on a small dairy farm. I learned the values of hard work and dedication, pinching pennies to pay the bills, and family values. I believe that family farms are important to our regional economy. It makes me sad when I see farm dispersal auctions in the paper or pasture land being turned into housing developments. My heart and soul is in farming, but sales and marketing is where my life's path took me. I know that I don't look like someone who has 17 plus years of experience, but let's just say I started young. <laughs> I've worked in several different fields and have gathered a great deal of knowledge over the years that assisted me with developing a solid marketing plan for this project. Now you need to know our goals, what we're setting out to do. Most entrepreneurs set out with one goal in mind, that's making money. Making a profit is what makes a business a success on paper. Sometimes it isn't all about the profit margins. We set out with a couple of goals in mind. These goals were to assist local landowners and farmers with economic viability, which will create an increase in local economic growth. Remember, we are supporters of family farms and what they provide within New York. What better way than to develop a plan that allows fallow farmlands to create a new renewable energy product? We began this process by researching what options were available for our own property to increase our farmland viability. After some initial research, we were pointed in the direction of producing for combustion alternatives. We began investigating the choices of forage production, which led us to inquiries on how to actually produce the pellets or briquettes ourselves. By utilizing alternative types of forage products on fallow farmland, there is no interruption of traditional feedstock production. This system is a value-added system for any landowner. Now let's walk through the process of how the biomass is actually formed. The first stage is grinding. Grinding of the raw material provides uniform particles. It is accomplished by a system similar to a feed grinder. The material is then sent to a mixing bin that allows for different batches of materials to be evenly mixed. 
The next step is the cubing process. The cubes are formed the same way as alfalfa cubes. The material is compressed through dyes to form a cube-like shape that is around an inch squared. From the cubing machine, the material travels through a cooling system and ultimately to a storage area. I bet you all want to know what kinds of materials we are anticipating. Fallow farmland will provide us with the best launching point and possibly the best raw material base. In our area, we have field upon field of weeds and goldenrod. By using the weeds for raw material, we will be able to immediately begin a transition of land into production for grassy biomass. There is no need to plant a specific crop or fertilize those fields. Harvesting and transportation costs will be the only costs that are incurred. Since we are trying to keep this process as simple as possible for the landowner or farmer, our initial proposal is to work with materials already available. Crop residues can be harvested as well, like corn stover and soybean straw. Mulch hay and straw are also great biomass alternatives. Then there are the designated energy crops that will boost the yield amounts. Those crops could be reaped canary, sudan, or rye grasses. It could also be switchgrass or even miscanthus. All the grasses I have listed are only a small portion of the possibilities. On the harvesting portion, there are options available that are flexible to the traditional planting and harvesting cycles of farming. Spring cuttings provide the option of harvesting fields that have been left standing over the winter. Fall cuttings can be worked around hay and corn harvesting or even harvested after that if you're using a natural redding process. The natural redding process leaches the minerals back into the ground. It's a process during which the grasses are mowed and windrowed and left in the field during rainy or snowy months until they can properly air or sun dry in the spring. This is the same process that turns good hay into mulch hay. Now I'm blind and I lost my spot. Um, the natural redding process program is the program that we wish to promote due to the fact that most of the minerals are put back into the ground, which as many of you know are important on fail farmland, especially if the farmer or landowner is looking forward to the future of that particular section of land returning to feedstock production. Now back to the questions that I asked in the beginning. Have you ever woke up one morning and wondered how life had brought you to this very point in time? How the discussions of yesterday have affected you today? Have you ever really had the chance to thank the people who have helped you along the way? A year ago, I never could have imagined standing up here. It just wasn't an option. Jeff has helped me with written material. Mental help. <laughs> Don't let him kid you. I have no idea why that guy still answers the phone when I call. He should look at it and see my number and go, uh-uh, not today. It's just not an option. <laughs> They have been a life send on this project. I, I don't know of any other way to put it. They've gone to bat for me. They've helped me work through everything, right from the bottom to the top. I mean, we are literally starting from a farm level and taking it to a manufacturing level. That's unheard of, especially for something different like this. And for me to be able to stand up here and to just blatantly say, thanks, there's no amount of words that can fill that. To me, this working with FarmNet hasn't been about even so much as creating new businesses. It's been about building relationships, friendships, and communities. That's big. That's really big. And I mean, I know as we progress through the future, I think I finally got Jeff from the if to when part. When this goes, we will be an active member to help contribute back to Parmenon. And that's the only way I know how to pay that service forward. And I do appreciate everything. And now I think I'm done. <laughs>